The bridge was built in 1906. It cost £70,000 in 1906 and today's money that's about £7.6 million. So a massive piece of transport infrastructure bringing vehicles and railways into the south side of Bristol for the very first time. It represents the heritage of the area, so its sort of identity has grown up with Bristol. It's part of the way Bristol has developed. Bristol is so dependent upon bridge transport and this is one of those iconic structures that Bristol people, particularly in the south of the city, have had a great affinity with for many, many years. This bridge was on the English Heritage at Risk Register and it gradually come to the point in two or three years' time it could have potentially been closed, it was, it was getting that bad. It's in need of total refurbishment, which is what we're doing, to make it suitable for cyclists, pedestrians and also a bus route. So we're going to have a guided busway trough in the centre of the bridge and we're also going to have a cycling track on one side and an emergency evacuation strip on the other. The outlook of the bridge won't change from an aesthetics point of view because we are changing structural members uh, and strengthening the structural integrity of the, of the bridge. We maintain the heritage, but we improve it so that the crossing experience is up to modern standards without detracting from what the bridge originally was. Logistics is the main issue on this scheme. One of them being we're working over the New Avon River Cut. Every two weeks we get the spring tides and the water will come over the deck. So we've designed the scaffold to be able to take the flow of the water. There's approximately about 1,100 cyclists and pedestrians would actually use this bridge every day. And it's the reason why we've got a substantial diversion route in place. We are blasting with an encapsulation because there's lead-based paints present and then pure access as well. This side of the bridge is pure grassland and the other side of the bridge where our offices are is just a single track road. So it's, it's been a few hurdles to get through but we've managed to get through them okay. What we've been pleased about Obviously, you can imagine this bridge is over 100 years old and we were expecting a lot of unforeseen. And Volkers have always been very proactive in not only identifying problems, but also identifying possible solutions. We work as a team, whereas other contractors, you tend to have uh, different scenarios where it tends to be a little bit of us and them. I've always had a very good working relationship with Volker Lasers. Personnel involved are contractually astute and aware. They're also technically minded. They know how to plan the works in a methodical way. So we've had a very good relationship over the years. And uh, looking forward to working with Volk Laser on, on any project, really. If the community is engaged with early on, they are then aware of what's going to happen. Nothing takes them by surprise. We too try to adopt the attitude to keep everybody informed as best as we can, so there's no surprises so they can engage with us and if they can offer any suggestions. And I think the benefit that Volker Laser get out from talking to the general public is to show as part of the Considerate Constructors Scheme that we're not just a Mickey Mouse builder and we go in and we show an interest for the community and we're actually here to help people and hopefully people in Bristol will like this new bridge once it's opened and like Volker Laser and what we've done. When you're growing up in, in any part of uh, wherever you live, you, you become attached to the local geology, the scenery, the, the buildings, and it becomes part of the psyche, it becomes part of the DNA about where you're born and bred. I think the actual structure, because it's got that long history associated with this part of Bristol, people view it in a huge amount of affection and will all be very pleased to see it refurbished and back to working order again.